What is up guys and welcome back to the game chamber and a really nice change of pace for the video today. The awesome people over at the arcade guys have collaborated with me and I'm bringing you a review of their ultimate retro 43 inch arcade cabinet. The arcade guys is a company based out of the US and Florida if I'm not mistaken that creates some of the coolest custom arcade cabinets for home use that I have ever seen. They're available in 32 inch, 43 inch and 55 inch models. They are almost completely completely customizable. Some purchases are more customizable than others. You can choose the trim color, you can choose the marquee design, and in certain designs like the 43 inch Ultimate Retro that I'm talking about today, you can actually create a custom wrap. So the entire arcade cabinet from ground up is exactly the way that you want it to look. The Ultimate Retro 43 inch comes with the four player joystick control panel, and it also comes with light guns, a track ball, and as I said, the custom wrap. And the design that you're seeing right now is something that I just told the arcade guys, a collection of my favorite video games of all time, and they put together all of these designs themselves. They actually went as far as to get the design off of my video game channel, my logo, and put that on there without me even telling them to. So there is a lot of creativity at play when it comes to these custom wrap designs, and I imagine all of the input that you want to give to them, they are more than receptive of all of that. And just with the little information that I gave them, I have one of the most awesome looking arcade cabinets that have ever been created. As far as the actual hardware of the cabinet, it comes with a 43 inch TCL smart TV. So this is an actual LED television that is here. So the colors are gonna be crisp. And of course there's a lot more room to play around with what you can actually do with this TV. If you feel like tinkering with it, I'm sure that's not what it's meant for, but the options are there if you have the creativity and the technological brain. They use Zippy brand joysticks and buttons. They're all customized and laid out by hand. There are high def speakers and subwoofer that are put into the marquee. You have the volume control with the TV remote, and this thing gets insanely loud if you want it to be. I mean, it's basically a home theater system inside of your arcade arcade cabinet so if you have a party if uh, you're an adult that just likes to rock whenever you are doing your games the sound quality and the volume capabilities of this cabinet are unprecedented as far as home arcade cabinets there are led lights behind the marquee where the speakers are and just like most led lights you do have the little remote where you can customize the color and the brightness and everything like that behind the actual marquee all of our designs are going to be different and so depending on your taste depending on the wrap design that you have you can customize the color of the LED to best suit your cabinet. The actual hardware that's inside that's doing all of the game emulation is the Raspberry Pi 4, which is one of the more advanced of today. This is the most up-to-date version of it. And this has 17,000 plus games on here. Yeah, let me say that again, 17,000 plus. And finally, as far as the dimensions of the cabinet, this thing is 72 inches high, 43 inches wide, and 24 inches deep. It is a full-size arcade cabinet, so definitely make sure you've got the spot for it because this thing is going to be automatically drawing people's eyes, whatever room you have it in. It is going to be a destination for whoever is visiting you. So now that we got all the details of this arcade cabinet out of the way, what do I actually think about it? I've had the ability to use this thing off and on for just about over a month, and me as well as my kids have played a variation of these games on multiple different systems or consoles that are available to be emulated. I've played old school arcade games. I've played some of the earlier NES, Sega Genesis style games. I've even went to the more modern consoles and games that are available like the original PlayStation and the N64. I have not experienced all 17,000 games, I can promise you that, but I have given myself a lot of variety in the types of games and the different 
eras and the different ages of these games to see kind of a full spectrum of what's available on this cabinet. And by a landslide, the biggest thing that I love about this cabinet, the biggest thing that I'm going to just continuously go back to and use it, and also the biggest thing that anybody who has come to my house and seen it gets drawn to is just the literal nostalgia bomb that you get from this thing. Just looking at the different game systems that are available to be emulated, and then diving into those and seeing all of the games that are available within that console. There are so many games that I grew up playing from the Sega Genesis to the original NES, the SNES, the N64, the original PlayStation, even Game Boy and Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance, all these things that just pretty much defined my childhood. So much of it is available on this cabinet, and I have had a blast going back through, especially the Sega Genesis, which was my first video game console that I ever owned, and just a gigantic piece of my childhood. Scrolling through and playing things like the original Terminator 2 game, playing things like the different Sonic games, even Scooby-Doo Mystery or Aladdin and Lion King, games that were the bane of my existence because they were just so difficult I could not get past level 3 and now playing them as an adult, and I still can't get past level three. Even turning the cabinet over to my kids and letting them play some of the games that I just dumped hours into as a kid, it's just been awesome to see how much joy they get from it. And that's easily been the best thing about this, is just kind of going back through and reliving some of those experiences from my childhood and sharing those experiences with other people, whether it's just you buying this for yourself and you're a single bachelor or you have a partner that you're gonna be playing this with or you have an entire household of kids that are gonna be coming in and trading off like an old school arcade. There's just so much old school nostalgia from the 70s, 80s, and 90s all the way through to the early 2000s to be experienced with this thing. And as I said earlier, it's not just like a visual destination that everybody that visits you automatically just gets drawn to it and is like, what is this? What is on this thing? But I've had my parents come over and look through some of the old games and my dad spouting out like, hey, does it have this game? I don't know. Let me see. Yep, there it is. And then he just sits there and plays it for a good five to 10 minutes. I mean, no matter who you have come over, whether this is something in a man cave or your garage, or if you're really bold, your living room, everybody's gonna wanna check this thing out and everybody's gonna have that nostalgia bomb when they see what's available on it. And even if you're somebody that didn't grow up with a lot of these game systems and the games that are available on this cabinet, and you're not gonna have that kick of nostalgia while you experience this, you're still gonna get one of the most extensive libraries and some of the most variety in retro gaming that is available. And if you're interested in checking out some of the video games and how things were back in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s this is probably the best way to do it the quality of the build of the arcade cabinet is extremely impressive as i said this is all cut and laid out and customized by hand every single one of these is put together by an actual person this is not something that's like mass produced through machines and so you do see that tender loving care that goes into all the different details from the way that the trim is customized for the color that you choose to the joystick and the control button layouts and how they're all even and symmetrical, even to the custom wrap job, which obviously was the biggest like visual just pop of creativity that you get when this thing is delivered. So if you're looking for something that's gonna be built with quality and what is inside of it is gonna be nothing but a quality library of games that is what this arcade cabinet is and finally i gotta praise the customer support of the arcade guys unfortunately when i was delivered this arcade cabinet for whatever reason the hdmi connection was not really working all that well and so no matter what game i played about every 60 to 90 seconds the game would cut to black for a split second and then go back and luckily i l reached out to the arcade guys i let them know the issue that i was having they jumped on the phone with me immediately tried to figure out what the issue was pinpointed it to the hdmi cable and immediately sent one out to me that arrived in a couple of days swapped out the cable haven't had a single problem since and so while i'm sure the amount of issues that they have to deal with with their deliveries of these cabinets are minimal if you do encounter any issues, they seem to be extremely helpful and extremely quick about doing whatever they can to help you resolve it. And now moving on to a couple of things that I haven't liked so much about the cabinet, and there's just a couple. You know, they're very minimal in the grand scheme of things. Uh, the first one, which I already expected, when you go through some of these games, especially the ones that lean a little closer to the 2000s era, like the N64 and the PlayStation especially, the arcade setup of controls 
aren't necessarily the best scheme to play those games. A lot of the older school games like Sonic and Mario and the SNES and Sega Genesis era works very well because those controller layouts are very similar to the controller layouts that we had for the actual consoles. But as you get into more modern gaming, like I tried playing Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, it's a little bit awkward trying to hit an arcade button to draw your weapon and then a totally different one to shoot it. And it just makes for a bit of an awkward experience. Now you can customize the layout of these buttons, but I didn't want to because I just didn't feel like messing with the system whatsoever. I was extremely leery about changing the control scheme for all games instead of just the one that I was doing. And so you do have that option available to you. And if you're somebody that's a little bit more uh, mentally prepared for how these emulators work and how to customize and troubleshoot without having to get on the phone with somebody, you're probably more likely to do those constant customizations depending on what game you're playing. But just in general, some of the games that are available here, the old school arcade joystick and button layouts, just not the most ergonomic way to play those games. Going along with that, there is also some games available on here that are gonna be a bit of a rough experience in just this arcade cabinet setup because you don't have the ability to save or load your game progress. Now, we're all kind of used to that. That's part of the nostalgic retro experience with some of the older games like the Sega Genesis or Atari or some of the arcade cabinet games available here. But once you start getting in, again, more modern games like the N64 and the PlayStation that were never meant to be played in one gigantic sitting like some of these older games were, it's going to be a little bit hard to really get into them when you know that when you turn the arcade cabinet off, you're going to be starting from scratch with things like Conker's Bad Fur Day or Resident Evil 3 Nemesis or some other games that are easily like an eight to ten hour experience. And there is some older variations of the emulators used by the arcade guys that have the ability to save and load. But unfortunately, while the game variety is massively better with this new Raspberry Pi 4 system, it doesn't have the ability to save or load your game. And so if that's something that's gonna be a deal breaker for you, that's something to keep in mind. Another one wasn't really an issue for me personally, but I could definitely see a lot of hardcore retro people bringing this up is that because you're playing on a modern widescreen television, some of the aspect ratios of the old school games that used to be played on a little square four by three ratio are stretched and moved just a little bit. I didn't think it looked that awkward or that strange to where it would just immediately call my eyes to it, but I definitely could tell in some of the games, like maybe Pac-Man or even some of the Mario games, that things look just a little bit wider, things look a little bit different as far as the ratio, and I played it just fine, it didn't bother me, but if you're somebody who's hardcore about really preserving that original experience that we had on the old cabinets or the old TVs from the 80s and 90s, that may bug you but you know who you are better than I do. If that sounds like something that's gonna hurt your experience, then just be aware that some games might have a little aspect ratio difference than what you remember. And finally, I really didn't like the light gun setup whatsoever. Now, luckily for me, I wasn't really interested in the light guns or the light gun games that were available to begin with, so it's not really much of a loss for what my experience was and what I wanted to get out of this arcade cabinet. But if you're somebody that is really looking forward to the light gun variety of games, and that's one of the big add-ons that is drawing you towards purchasing the Ultimate Retro, or if that's something that you are planning on adding to one of the other cabinet varieties that they have, you may not get the same experience that you're hoping for. This is not like the old school light gun games. This is kind of using a similar setup to the Nintendo Wii, where it's actually an infrared bar that is attached just underneath the marquee, right where your speaker cutouts are, and they're USB guns that work alongside with that. First of all, I just thought the setup of the guns was kind of a pain. There is a video tutorial available and shows you exactly how to do it. The process itself is simple, but the way that the cabinet responded while I was doing it was not really exactly the way that it was in the video. You had to hold down the trigger for five seconds to activate the configuration mode, and then you have to shoot the little tracking reticle to kind of get the gun calibrated, and it always got stuck on one of them four out of five times that I was configuring it. Now, once you configure the controller, you're good. But the other issue that I have once you finally do get through the configuration process, which again is not 
like the old light gun games is that you're not really supposed to actually move the gun around. You actually have to plant that thing in the middle and just move your wrist, which is just a very awkward feeling, especially if you're kind of have that muscle memory of those old school games to where you're constantly kind of doing this and getting into the gameplay and shooting outside of the cabinet to reload. This one, it's very important to stay locked in one position because the range of motion to actually stay in field of view of that IR sensor is extremely small. So that made for a bit of an aggravating experience for the games that I did try on the light gun games and I quickly kind of grew tired of it. So as I said, didn't affect what I wanted out of the arcade cabinet, but if that's one of the main draws for you, just know that this is the type of experience that it's delivering is the IR, the infrared bar, like the old school Nintendo Wii, not like the light gun games that you're going to remember. But all in all, guys, this is one of the coolest things in my household at the moment. It's something that every single time somebody comes over that has not already been to my house and seen it, I immediately want to show it to them, not only just for the custom wrap job that is just absolutely me, but also just showing the variety of games that are there and even playing along with some friends or family and getting that old school arcade experience that is just, like I said, a gigantic nostalgia bomb. So if you're somebody that is really into retro gaming, if you're somebody that has wanted an arcade cabinet that is maybe not the mass produced ones that are available in retail stores, something with more variety, something that uh, has more customization to it, something that is certainly much more of a visual and just a fun destination in your house, look no further than the different products available by the arcade guys. So definitely check them out. I'll have the links down in the video description below, especially for this specific cabinet. And if you already have one of these cabinets, let me know down below what is the game that you've had the most fun revisiting. So that is going to be it for this review, guys. Please check it out. Consider adding it to your household because you're going to have nothing but fun and nostalgia for you and everybody that comes to check it out well that's it for this one guys if you enjoyed this review please click over here for all of my 2023 new release video game reviews and i'm also going to put my most recent resident evil live stream here that you could check out we went over the entire franchise me and a couple of friends please like and share and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss everything in the future and as always remember the game chamber is commander shepherd's favorite channel on the youtubes